Did you know there's a newish smart swap feature in Canva that lets you swap the position of two or more elements just by dragging them right over top of each other? So how do we access this new feature? When does it work? When does it not work? What are the quirks? What are the things you need to keep in mind? How can it be helpful? Well, we're going over all of that in this video. Okay, so what is smart swapping in Canva? Well, I define smart swapping as the ability to quickly swap positions of two or more design elements when you're working within the Canva project interface. So we have these two cat elements on screen. This guy's dabbing. The only reason I know that dabbing term is because I have three teenagers in my house. But so what if I wanted to swap the positions of these cats? Well, of course you could click on one, you could drag it, then you could click on the other and reposition and get them roughly where you thought they were. And that's not hard to do, but it does take a little bit of time. But there is a better way to do it now that we have smart swapping in Canva. Now this is a relatively new feature in Canva, but you should see this feature if you have at least two elements selected. And sometimes what you have when you have more, which we're going to talk about in a moment. But first, let's just do it with these two cats right here. So if you have one cat selected or one element selected, and then you just shift click to select another element, then you'll notice you get this icon right here. And when you hover over it, it turns sort of a dark blue. This is the smart swap icon. Whenever you see this icon, you're going to see it on multiple elements because you have to have multiple elements selected to see this. And then what you do is just click on one, click and hold with your left mouse button, just drag, and then you can drop into position. So drag and drop. If I want to drag them back, drag and drop. And so that's a left click. And you're holding down that left mouse button while you move until you see them switch like that. And then once you see them switch like that, if you just release that, that mouse button, they're going to snap into their new positions. So this is a swap, the smart swap feature. It may not seem like a huge deal, but it is helpful. It can save you time. Anytime we can save time in Canva, we love that. We want to save time. We want to work more efficiently. Hey, this is Greg with a very quick interlude. Then I'll get you right back to this video. If you are someone who likes to stay up to date on the latest Canva tips and tricks, besides following this channel, I also have a free Canva resources page for anyone who signs up to my Canva newsletter. So I will place a link to that below in the first pinned comment. Now in this example on screen, both these cats are graphic elements and we only have two elements here, but you can do this with more than two elements and they don't have to be graphic elements. So let's take a look at some other examples to see how you can really get the most out of these features and situations where you're really most often going to use it. So if I click over just to the next page here, we see that now we have graphic elements, but we also have photo, we have a text here. So if I were to just hit control A to select everything on the screen, we'll notice I do not get that smart swapping element. It's not an option. So let me just click off them to deselect. But what if I were to just click and select these three right here? So you can shift click one element, then a second, then a third, but you can also just drag a selection box around multiple elements. You notice when I click and when I click dragged and selected these three elements, I do get the smart swapping option and now suddenly I can swap the position of any of these elements. And so this smart swapping feature tends to work when you have objects in a row or objects on a grid. So we'll look at some more examples and that'll make this a little bit more, more obvious. But when this smart swapping one is up here, this text is up here on its own, I can't select all of them because they're not really in this cohesive grid or sort of in a line across the screen. Now it doesn't have to be a perfect line because what if this cat was up here and he was there and this one was sort of, let's just reposition them so they're not all quite in the same row, but I still have that smart swapping option. So it doesn't have to be a perfect row, but they just sort of have to be in a row across the screen. Now, when you do start working with like a grid where you have multiple rows or columns, then things do really have to be precisely aligned for this to be an option. And I'll show you what I'm, I mean. But all that said, the good news is even if I hit control A and it's not going to work with all of these because they're sort of not in a line, at any point in time, you can swap any two elements. So just this text will still work. I just have to come in here. Let me fit this to screen a little bit better. If I were to select my text and then select any element, so let's say I wanted to swap with the dog, I'm just going to shift click and do that. And then suddenly I do have this icon and it is an option. So pretty much at any point in time, you can click one element, shift click any other element, and you're going to get this smart swapping option. So even though sometimes when you're doing more than two objects, you really sort of have to have them in a row. If you're doing just two objects where you select one and then the other, you're pretty much always going to have this smart 
swapping option. So it is very helpful. Now let's look at some more examples because a lot of times when you're doing this, you're going to be working naturally on a grid because we'll notice right now when I have these as at different sizes, then suddenly when I swap things, you're getting, uh, you're not getting the sizes to swap. The sizes are staying the same. So sometimes it may throw off sort of what design spacing, what design, you know, you'd set up in terms of having a cohesive look. So a lot of times working on a grid is when this is gonna be most appropriate and maybe make the most sense because that might be the type of situation where you really wanna try you know, swapping images. And I'll show you what I mean by looking at this next example. So in the example on screen now, I really do have these six elements spread out in a precise design grid where I was very careful, careful to keep the spacing equal in between all of the different elements. And when that's the case and I select everything now, you'll notice I have this swap icon on all of these. So I really can grab any two images and then just very quickly swap the places. So this works if you have things in a really precise grid like this. Now, there's a lot of ways to set up this kind of spacing. And when I say grid, first, before I talk about spacing, when I say grid, I'm not talking about under the elements, how you can search for grid and find an element like this. Because if you have a grid and this were placed in a grid, all these were placed in a grid, you wouldn't be able to quickly select individual elements like that and do this kind of smart swapping. Just to show you what I mean, this here, because it's a grid, so this is sort of a two column grid that I found by going under the elements tab and grabbing this element right here. Because this is sort of one element, I can't really select them both at once within one grid. So this is really thinks, uh, Canvas sort of thinks of this as one design element, this grid and this grid. So the only way to swap would be if I selected both grids like this, and then I can swap my grids. But if this was all a grid, that would be like one element. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm just saying that sort of as an aside. I don't mean when I say that this is a design grid that I grab this element here. No, I just mean that I really paid close attention to my spacing. Now there, there are multiple ways to get precise spacing like this. I think the easiest way would be if you go up here under your file menu, and then you come down to settings, and then you have uh, guides and rulers. And if you choose add guides, you can really come in here and set up a custom layout where you really are careful about you know, how many columns you want, how many rows. And then an example like this, I would wanna make sure that the gap between my columns and my rows was exactly the same. That's how I'm gonna set it up so that this smart option is gonna work for everything. Uh, and I say that because you do have to be precise. You'll notice if I select everything now, yes, I have that option. But what if I were to select this bottom left one and just nudge it by one pixel? I don't know if you know that if you notice that, I just moved it by one pixel, but now when I select everything, you'll notice I no longer get that smart swap option. So if your spacing is off just by a little bit, you're gonna lose this option when you select all of these elements. Now, it's worth noticing, if I come in here and select just three of the elements within a row, I still have this smart swap option. So I could select them that way, I could select the two this way and do smart swap, or I could still select any one element, shift click to select any other element, and I still have that option. So it's not the end of the world. If you don't have this perfect spacing, you can still do smart swapping just by strategically selecting a row or selecting two elements. But if you really wanna have like a, a bigger uh, grid that has rows and columns, then you have to have precise spacing to get it to work. Now, if I were to just nudge this one back in so that everything's perfectly aligned again, then suddenly I restore that option. So if you do want the smart spacing, uh, precise spacing, you can use grids, uh, you can use guides by going to this file menu settings, add guides like I showed you before. Of course, you could also manually do this where you drag something on the screen. And so this would snap at 642. I can see it says 642. If I drag out another guide, which I can just do by grabbing my rulers and dragging out to the next position, I see that 663, so that's 21 pixel gap. So then I would just wanna add guides and make sure I have the same gap here to make sure that this 20 is 21 pixels away from this, the same way that is. So multiple ways to do this. Of course, you could also add a rectangle and I could very carefully size it to exactly what I want, 21 pixels. Uh, and then if I also sort of dragged it and rotated it 90 degrees, I could make sure I had that same gap between these two. So again, usually multiple ways to do things in Canva. So if you wanna be very careful about your uh, sort of spacing, you can do that so you can have this smart swapping fully enabled. But again, and at any time at all, you can click one and then click another element. And if you have two elements selected, this smart swapping is always gonna work. 
Now this particular example here has five photos in one video. Uh, this is a video right here. So you can do this with different types of content. And we saw before in an initial example how you could do it with text also in one of those early examples. But so this gives us even more to talk about. There is a little bit more to discuss here. Uh, let's look at this example right here. Uh, so here I have text and this is just text where if you ever put a rectangle on screen, let me just do it now with my R key. You notice that initially you can just type some text right in there. So this is actually just one element because the text is part of that rectangle. So let me just get rid of this new rectangle I put on screen. Uh, not the photo. I wanted to get rid of this rectangle. Let me just click off, click on, delete that. Uh, but so the, since this is part of the rectangle, this text, uh, that means I can just select everything here and then I can swap all this together. So imagine this was your design, but you wanted to play around with where you had the headline in this design. Uh, so I can select everything. I can just start swapping positions until I find, you know, what I think looks the best, what's gonna work best for my design. Now, what if this text had been separate from the rectangle? So if I go ahead here now and I get rid of this here, uh, and delete the text and obviously I could still swap that but then if I just added another uh, text heading so let's just say my heading had been separate so I had my heading maybe up there now suddenly if I select everything this is really selecting two elements so if I select those two elements you'll see I can actually swap those which is kind of weird right uh, but then what if I shift clicked another thing here I can swap but I'm only swapping one at a time and really I want the heading to be part of this design block here so in situations like this, you need to think about grouping elements because just the way, just like we looked at this example here, where this is treated like one element, if we group things together when working with headlines like this, then suddenly it's going to be treated like one element. So if I grab these here and I group these, and then suddenly it's treating this as one element, then suddenly I can shift click to select another element and then I can use this smart swap and I'm swapping them together, which in this example is what you want. So you have to pay attention and you have to think about this. Now let's look at another, another example considering the same thing. So if I click on this one here, we actually have a heading, a subheading, uh, and then we have some body text right here. Uh, so maybe this is your design here and you wanted to play around with where you have this uh, text part of your grid in your design here. Well, I could select everything here and I could group it together, but you notice the way all these photos take up the same amount of screen real estate, the same size, and then suddenly we have an area here that has a decent amount of white space, so it's not really the same size as this uh, photo or any of the other photos here. So even though I group these now, suddenly if I do my shift click and then I swap these here, then suddenly, hmm, this photo is really no longer lining up with the grid, which probably isn't what you want. Now, maybe you want that, but probably you don't want that. So in a situation like this, what can we do? Well, let me hit Control Z to undo that. Uh, and so if I just come up here and add a rectangle on screen, I can drag out a rectangle. Now, even though we maybe want white space behind this and even the color white, so white space can really refer to just negative empty space, even if it's a different color, but I'm talking specifically about white. We want the white here uh, that's the color of this behind this. So even though I might not want this blue rectangle, if I just use it temporarily and I bring it up here temporarily, again, paying attention to the size so that I match it to the size of the other photos, and then I temporarily group all this together then suddenly I can just do my shift click and then I can sort of move that real quick and then maybe I'll click on this ungroup. Then I'm gonna click on that blue rectangle specifically and get rid of that. And so that way I maintain the spacing. This photo lines up perfectly. Whereas when we did it before, it didn't quite match up. So you might have to use this trick a little bit where you sometimes bring in a rectangle that sort of matches up with you know, your spacing of your other elements, your size of your other elements, if you wanna maintain spacing and do this kind of trick. Uh, so it's just something helpful to have in your back pocket as another little trick you can do just to maintain this type of spacing. Now, of course, you can specifically drag out guides and you can move things other way around. So I could move these independently. I could have a little rectangle or another guide here that said I want this much spacing, but with this new smart swap feature, sometimes you don't have to take these extra steps because just with some thoughtful thinking, selecting and swapping elements, you can reposition and try things very quickly. So even though this smart swapping option isn't like a huge, huge deal, 
it's still kind of pretty cool. So it gives you a nice option. It can save you time, especially when working with a design element like this. Or so maybe you're working at a photo gallery. You have a gallery like this. Uh, lots of lots of instances where I could see this being helpful. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. When you're working with the grid, we already mentioned you have to have that precise spacing to have something work. But there is another thing that can make this not work. Uh, right now, everything here is oriented sort of as it's normally added to the screen. But what if I take this photo here and I just rotate it slightly? So when I rotate this photo slightly and then I shift click another element, you'll notice, uh oh, does not work. So I mentioned that you can click one element, shift click another element, and this is always going to work. Well, I actually misspoke slightly because it's not going to work if you have something rotated. Okay, so if you have any sort of rotation on an element like this one here, it's not going to work. So in a situation like this, you would not be able to use that smart swapping. Now, of course, you could sort of set up this grid, uh, do whatever you want in terms of swapping, and then do the rotation afterwards, and then that would work. But if you have an element even slightly rotated, it's not going to work. Okay, but now that you understand this feature, now that you understand when it works, when it doesn't work, uh, how a grouping can come into play, now I think as you move forward, you might find more and more opportunities in your design projects when it might be helpful. So let's just look one, at one last example. So here is just an ebook uh, page. This is a recipe book uh, page, and this is a uh, particularly table of contents page. Now when I set this up, I actually created this as a grid, and that was before we even had this smart swapping element. Now we mentioned before, this is not gonna work with the grid, so maybe if I set this up again, maybe I would do individual elements. So I had that smart swapping option. It just gives me something else to consider. There are advantages to using a grid like this, but there are advantages as we've seen with that smart swapping object. But in this particular uh, design, I also use very precise spacing for my elements here. So let's just say I decided I wanted to swap a couple of these recipes. So let's just say I wanted to swap shortbread and I wanted to swap uh, lemon cheesecake. Since I have them taking up the same amount of page, since I was very careful with my spacing here, we know now I could select one, I could select the other. I'm gonna get that smart swapping option. Very quickly, I can swap those. Now let me just swap them back because I'm also swapping the page number. I could of course swap them and then come in and after the fact and edit the page number. But if I wanted to not do that and just do it a different way, again, you're always gonna have multiple choices. So it's whatever way ends up being faster. But I could also come in here and ungroup these and just group this portion of it and then group it back together. Same thing down here, let's ungroup and then let's just group this portion back together. Then of course, with that group selected in this first one we're no longer swapping the page numbers we're just swapping the recipe titles themselves okay so this is smart swapping in canva just another feature to understand uh, because there are times when it can be helpful now is this something you're always going to use on every project no i don't think so you still have guides you still have other ways to position things but there are going to be instances where you're like oh hey smart swapping i have that that'll save me a little time that'll let me try out some different layouts here moving things around in my design grid so remember smart swapping in canva use it when you find it helpful thanks for watching i'm greg i hope you find this channel helpful if you do don't forget to like and subscribe so you can stay up with all the latest updates on canva and the best way to stay updated also is signing up for my free email newsletter and i also have some free resources related to canva for anyone who signs up for my newsletter so i'll put that resources page link down in the first pinned comment so feel free to check that out visit back to this channel whenever you can and i look forward to seeing you soon thanks Everything I do so instinctive and so passionate Every word I move so descriptive like an adjective I got a vendetta against people who patented Being negative when you should be getting after it I got facts over facts over tracks This and that spitting slow, spitting fast I could roast, I could gas, think I'm okay at last But I don't know if that can erase all the past